Welcome to the Old Souls and Seekers podcast brought to you by Satori Prime. If you're anything like us, you've been around and around the personal development and mindset block quite a few times. You've read the books, watched the videos, attended the seminars, and even worked with a coach or two, and yet you still find yourself searching for more. You may even feel stuck or that you should be farther along than where you are right now. And after doing over a decade of mindset work, we've come to this realization. Mindset work is like a small hit of dopamine that distracts you from your true work. You get these little hits of feeling better only to be met with the same underlying conditions and patterns over and over again. Now, mindset was an important part of your evolution as well as ours, but it hits a plateau and now you find yourself ready for that deeper layer of growth and expansion. If you're listening to this podcast, then you're ready to get off that Ferris wheel. This podcast is only for those that are ready to dive deep and do the real inner healing work. For those that are ready to move past more information into actual experiences. If you're looking for more understanding, then you've come to the wrong place. This is a home for old souls ready to fully embrace and remember who they truly are. Ready to make a profound difference in their lives and in the lives of others. So welcome home, dear one. We're excited to be part of your journey. Welcome back to another episode of Old Souls and Seekers here with myself, my brother, and we have a special guest star here today. He's actually been on the show in the past, and you may have noticed we actually don't do that many interviews on the podcast anymore, and uh, mostly because we we don't really enjoy people being self-promotional on our podcast. We really want to have genuine, beautiful conversations with people out there who are making a difference and doing good work. Um, we have, like I said, a very special guest star, in my opinion, that goes by the name of Asil. Asil is a trans channel. You can go online on YouTube and search Asil Tuxal. Am I saying your last name correct? Just remind me. That's all right. Yeah. And I got introduced to Sil, I want to say three, possibly, yeah, about three years ago, because it was during COVID. And uh, there's a lot of incredible content he puts on YouTube. And if you've never experienced working with the channel in any capacity, and probably if you're part of our channel, you have to some degree, because you've seen us on Cryon and other uh, channeling shows and stuff like that. Uh, Asil, in my opinion, um, brings something very different through his channelings, very, very deep, energetic transmissions. I would liken them to taking like a light dose of plant medicine. It actually feels when you're sitting with him. And uh, myself, my brother, my wife, my sister-in-law, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, lots of our friends have all participated in his work and everybody's gotten um, incredible benefit. We've also had the benefit of becoming fairly good friends with Asil over the years and having him over to our homes and with our friends and doing work together. And so we've gotten to intimately know him well beyond just his work. And, you know, there's very few people that I know that hold uh, such a high integrity container. Every time I'm in this space, it's always a wonderful experience. Uh, we intermittently get to just like chat on WhatsApp and when we have things going on in, in our lives or our friends' lives, things that we can't explain, like soul, spiritual things, like a sill is a, a really good resource of, of consultation. And he's just always, always there. Like he's just such a stable, grounded force on this planet doing incredible work. So I'm going to let him introduce himself if he'd like. And then I'd love to also share with you guys some of the work that he's recently been doing on the planet because it's really profound and I think impactful to everybody in this world and our evolution as a species and as a consciousness. So hopefully that wasn't too big of a stage to, to step on a cell, but we're so happy to have you back and, and welcome back, brother. It's a pleasure. And that was an amazing introduction. I wish I could record this and give it to everyone. <laughs> it is no, it's we'll give it to you. <laughs> Feeling honored, trying not to blush at the same time. Yeah. Um, it's so good to see you guys, you know, in person, digitally, it doesn't really matter. Just your energy has always been like brothers and yes. family. So I really appreciate that. It's been an interesting journey, right? The, you know, when we first met, there was an interesting unfolding happening, even right, I would say like even before COVID, there is like 
there was like a new wave happening, a new opening of spiritual development that was like moving into the younger audiences, like people in our age, you know, I'd say like, I still consider us young, you know, 30, 30 to 40, you know, like in that range, people, you know, there was like a new wave of awakening that was coming in. And then COVID hit. And then everyone was like, wake up, right? It was just like this massive wake up call. And after COVID, I've been feeling, first of all, the energies have gotten like really, really much, much stronger. Yeah. And it's shaking up everything that is in any way shakable, in any way unstable, in any way unprocessed to the surface. Yes. And it's like, welcome to the new reality. Mm -hmm. It's like, process it, digest it, realign and become a new version of yourself every day. And if you don't, you'll feel it like everyone around you is going to feel it. So that's been kind of like what I've been witnessing in the last year and year and a half. And just like a general observation of what we as a nonprofit and as an organization are focusing on. It's like, this is what's happening in the field of humanity. Yeah. And how can we bring something that's going to help people? And I would just want to ask you guys, like, have you been, I, I saw you nodding, like, have you been yeah. experiencing a similar way? Yeah. And, and it's very interesting. I love that you said it was happening before COVID and then like COVID happened. And what I noticed, it was, I always tell people like that I talked to that COVID felt like a magnifying glass in a way. It was just highlighting and expanding what had always been there, but people could find ways to hide from it, escape from it, et cetera. Everyone, it was like God or the universe was like, everyone to your rooms, <laughs> you know? And it's like, some people didn't like what was in their rooms or in their houses. And other people really loved what was in their room and in their houses. And so it kind of got to magnify that. And the one thing that I think got kicked into like a whole other gear on the humanity side is a collective all at one time, you know, we'll be talking about like war torn countries and things like that later. But like, you know, usually if there's a war, it's really impacting us. If you think about it, a small spot on the globe. Yes, there's people impacted because you have family or, you know, certain people just get impacted more by atrocities and things like that because, you know, probably old soul and stuff like that. But this is the first time that as a globe, we were all experiencing something all at once. And the fear response, obviously driven by media and all that stuff, I think people's nervous systems got so jacked. And so there was this, it felt like for about two, three months, there was this doom and gloom that just kind of like laid on top of humanity mm -hmm. and then there was certain people light workers people that have done work that were able to almost like the first you know flowers like find their way through that fog and bring light and like start to grow and it felt like after that three four month period people were kind of coming out out of this days and wanting seeking something because when you have a fear response that's so great to like your life um it always brings into question you know when people get sick or have crazy car accidents or whatever it is and survive it recontextualizes certain things in life i think that's what began to happen but we were doing it on a global scale with everyone at the same time which that's what it's felt like and then since then it's like everything has been in hyperdrive that's what it's felt like. Like everything is in hyper. I mean, it's almost like lessons used to come in a certain tick in a certain pace. And now it's like, you know, and for those that are playing the game, I think we could harness and feel it. But for those who are not ready to play the game, it's like machine gun, you know, they're just <laughs> they're like, what do I do? Can so I, can I, I can think, yeah, real quick. So I just want to give some context. So when a is channeling, there are, are certain guides teachers, if you want to call them, you know, names can be interchangeable that come through and like use his body as a vessel. Like I don't, I, he, he doesn't get taken over per se, but like there's movement involved and the cadence changes and it, you know, it very much feels like there's like a spiritual deep wisdom coming through him. Um, and I don't know if there's more, but there's three, Emmanuel, Raphael, 
and Elohim, which is ironically the name for for God in Judaism as well. And the prof- I mean, profound stuff. So I'm I'm curious from from their perspective uh, over these last three years, and I want to contextualize it with a little bit of this. Is that my understanding is we are in highly prophesized times as well. Like the the indigenous pointed at this specific era of human history. I think even in uh, Native American cultures, they have these like three boulders that they put on our timeline, and there's like these like three major events that would occur in human history that basically are the stepping stones for our higher evolution. And we're like at the third one. And it's this six year period between 2020 and 2026 that they pointed at and said, it's going to be very, very, very intense during this period of time. It's like the timelines. Like if you think of timelines, like strings on a guitar, and it's like, sometimes we can like leap through like certain quantum mechanics and evolutionary spiritual work, but suddenly the timelines are very compressed. And it's like, it's almost like easy to jump timelines which can be you can imagine highly dysregulating for a system um but like eventually it kind of stabilizes and comes back out into its original form so i am really curious from the point of view of the the guides and and what you're experiencing when you're channeling what are they kind of saying about this this energy you know when i started to channel the guides the first time and it was you know like we're talking about six seven years ago um so fairly recent actually for me sure when you were talking about oh, big changes are coming. The most important thing for you to do as an individual to learn how to be truly present and have your entire power be in the present moment rather than be dispersed into the past uh, or dispersed into the future, right? Here is what you can make a choice and here is where all your energy is, right? In the present moment. And they were talking about, you know, things will unfold that will challenge you mentally, emotionally, physically, as a society, as a culture, as humanity. And I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. Is it like, you know, the Trump era that they're talking about? Or are they talking about, you know, there wasn't too much going on right before COVID. Kind of like I would say the usual in some ways. Um, without trying, you know, without diminishing things that were actually happening and impacting people. But then COVID hit and I was like, oh, wow, this is what we have been preparing for. Like we have been practicing this type of training and teaching how to be present in the face of a global challenge where everyone is subjected to a similar intense experience. Of course, everyone had their own flavors, but the things that were coming to surface were even not even like COVID related. You know, it was like COVID was a catalyst for things to come to surface. And then we were almost being tested. How are we going to respond to the things that are unprocessed coming to the surface? So that was an interesting learning experience. And as you said, with what the native tribes are saying, indigenous tribes are saying, it's very similar. The guys are also saying that this is a, we are on the cusp of a major maturation experience, like an evolutionary stage in human Mm. existence. So humanity as a collective consciousness is going to make a major jump. And it's kind of like in that shortly before birthing, right? labor hasn't started yet but it's like it's kind of ripe you know what i'm talking about you both have kids you know exactly what what i'm talking about so it's kind (laughs) of like in that it could happen any day you know but it's like this very strong ripening and i believe what you're experiencing elon about this acceleration of realizations is part of this evolutionary process Mm -hmm. it's Everything is coming to surface. If you know how to process it and let it process through you, then you're going to have a bit more of an easier time surfing these waves that are coming. If you're not, the waves are just going to like tumble you around and you're like, what is going on today? Like, is it, you know, this planet or that planet or whatever is solar flares? But it's really the rising energy of this reality is going to push everything in our subconscious and conscious to the surface to be processed in very simple words. I have an interesting thought that just came through. And obviously, so like you you have wisdom that's, that's coming and being channeled from the far reaches of who knows where. There's two things that popped up. One is, you know, have they spoken 
about anything in this quote unquote maturation test, you know, how did we do as humans that that I have a curiosity about. And two, I think for certain listeners, right, like, as this is getting faster and faster and faster, it's getting more and more intense. And and what I feel humans are wanting is the break, the reprieve, the like, okay, can we just like, just give me a day to sit over here and like nothing happened where I could just be like, holy crap, you know, like to, to capture our breath again. So I'm curious, are they speaking? about anything that's kind of coming and you know how we did on the test were the two thoughts that came through you know what's interesting is they do not really judge in the way we've been perceiving and 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 a very judgmental god in the you know clouds and it's okay. it's almost like this incredibly loving perspective a very non-dual perspective on this evolutionary process that we're going through even the most atrocious things we do to each other as humans they're like well you know it's part of this template and we're seeing based on what you do with this human form where you are in your consciousness maturation and what you're learning from the things that you do even if you do something atrocious what does your soul and what does the collective consciousness learn from that mm -hmm. right so that's kind of like you know it's a very wildly big perspective with which they're looking at and it's sometimes very difficult for my small human brain to really comprehend right. you know this yeah. you know this high dimensional perspective but they are saying that the next five to ten years are going to be challenging for us you now we will have we will reap the challenges of a lot of things that have accumulated over many many generations in human existence and a lot of consequences of our actions that haven't really come to fruition yet right so things will come to fruition in generational subconscious unconscious things coming to surface and they're saying humanity as a collective consciousness is not going to mature out of this form or into something beautiful and expansive until it has processed everything yeah. of its past. So we can't really just say like, oh yeah, that was like three generations ago. We've almost forgotten about it. And that was just like, you know, great grandfather is experiencing this stuff and it's, it's all good. No, it's like in our fabric and it is part of our processing. And I've been noticing that very, very strongly on some of my last trips in this collective trauma work that I've been doing. Yeah. And as, as you name that, you know, like right now in the like collective zeitgeist, there's a lot of conversation about Oppenheimer, the movie. And uh, I got a chance to see it over the weekend. And besides him as a director, just being potentially the most genius mm. script film producer of, of all time, the movie is is, is extremely deep and I won't get into all that, but you know, suffice it to say for those of you that don't know what the movie is about, it's about creation of atomic energy and the atomic weapon during the end of World War II and, and its facility and being used. But as I watched the movie, what I was left with was a lot of heavy feelings in my body and sadness, A, that is really not that long ago, but how removed we are from that period of time because of how much technological advancement and societal advancement has been. So it seems like such a long time ago, but I mean, my parents were nearly born right around that time. Grandparents were born even before that. So, but what I got left with was this feeling of how the dominoes have been dropping yeah. for like the last 150, 200 years. And that even COVID and certain oppression that we're dealing with at the level of society and governments and this and that has been this ongoing process Right. And something that recently I heard, I think that's true, is with the advent of uh, 2012 and moving beyond that, that we, were, we have just come out of the age of darkness. We've just moved towards the age of light and we're slowly moving towards the age of love. But the age of light is not this happy, happy time. It's the time where everything that was in the darkness comes to light. And I agree because when you do your interpersonal work, that's what I feel like for me the last three years have been. It's like I can't avoid anything. Right. Every, every uncomfortable feeling, every uncomfortable event, everything that terrifies me, angry me saddens me and it's not like i remember when i was a kid i was like an event would happen once in a while i feel like every few days or every at least once a week like something yep. big hits my system and i'm like what the fuck i'm like I, I just found stability again you know can you give me a breather here and it's like boom another one boom another one boom another one it's like and i'm always like why and it's like because you can i'm like this is the time and i like clear it out and i'm like and, and in a weird way i'm like thank you sir can i have another because i'm like mm -hmm. i am i am committed to my liberation and whatever needs to unfold to have that of course my like you said my puny human mind hates it 
it's like, can we just get some good stuff here from my spiritual self? I could feel how it's freeing my mind and allowing me to be with much, much bigger energies in my body, much, much bigger experiences and still feel overall a sense of stability, even though my chattery mind is like, yo, this is really scary. I'm like, yeah, but we have stability too. So right. it's interesting how that's kind of showing up right now in the collective, even at the level of media, sound of freedom and all these things that are like, hey, look, they're pointing at underbellies of society. And people are like, it's never been this bad before. I'm like, no, it's been this bad for like thousands of years. Now we're just talking about it and looking at it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you you started to talk about some of the work that you've you've been doing and been called to do. I'd love for you to just to share some of the experiences that you've been guided to do and, and take others with you because they're profound. Thank you. And just to connect it to what you said, Guy, it's I, I agree with you. What we are seeing in terms of what we are capable of transforming is directly related to our ability to process it. And that's like, because you can is absolutely right. And it's like, literally in my mind's eye, it's like this big thing when I feel something really monumentous and I feel like it's so heavy or big. And it's like, I, I as a human being, I don't know how I could potentially process this. And I'll talk a little bit about collective trauma in a second that's when the guys basically say well this is what you've been preparing for this is what you've been practicing for your consciousness is capable of witnessing this observing it and turning it into a realization you can look at this without being completely obliterated I'm like okay i see where this is going but it still feels a bit like work like, yes. yeah it is part of the work of human evolution in an accelerated period of time where like it's a condensed period of time that we are in and it's a very very important period of time so collective trauma we all have it it's in the fabric of society it's in a lot of the decisions we make it's in how we walk through the day and what kind of things we create what we teach our children what we don't teach them what we allow ourselves what we don't allow others what we believe and what we don't believe everything is impacted by the things that we have experienced processed and not processed so collective trauma has a big impact on who we are today would you guys agree a million percent i mean and so, i think there's even studies that were talking about bro correct me if i'm wrong that it's like actually in the dna like yes. it is passed down yeah epigenetics is, the new, is the new stuff is the new thing on the block you know spiritual people have said this for like a you know, hundred thousands of years right and now science is like oh yeah it's actually we can actually see it in the dna trauma is inherited I'm like Great. Thank you for letting us know. And <laughs> confirming. Welcome um, to the party. Exactly. So totally agreed. Trauma. We kind of like, you know, you guys were part of this trauma processing of oneself, you know, like childhood trauma and the things we've experienced and how that was delivered to us by parents and so on. And there are some trauma techniques where we Basically, we take the things that we own and the other things we kind of send upwards to our ancestors so they can process this. You know, I've been taking this whole thing to a whole nother level. Like personal trauma healing is a beautiful thing. Everyone should do it. You know, whoever hasn't like started it, please, please start on it. I guarantee you won't regret it. It will be hard work, but it'll pay off a hundred million times back for you, your family, everyone around you. Aside from that, when people continue to develop in this way and they become what I would consider higher capacity conduits, like you guys, you start to process and you start to become a conduit for the trauma that needs to be processed in the subconscious and the unconscious of the people around you in the field that you're in, right? Your family, your friends, work stuff, but then also generational stuff, parents, grandparents, great grandparents, and so on. The country that you're in, the state that you're in, the energies of the wars that made the place that you're in. So a lot of these things are part of the field that you're in and they influence you either consciously, subconsciously or unconciously. I would say 99% of it is subconscious and unconscious, right? In the work that we do, all of us, right? The three of us and many people that watch this show, we are expanding our conscious awareness of who we are and how this reality operates. Would you guys agree? Mm -hmm. Your conscious awareness expands. And if you imagine it to be like a pie chart of everything conscious and unconscious and subconscious and conscious awareness is a tiny sliver, right? 
that sliver is becoming bigger and bigger. Yeah. More yeah. things of the subconscious and unconscious are becoming into conscious awareness. Now, a lot of people say, well, did, was ignorance bliss? Did I really, do, do I really need to see and feel and, and, and sense all of this unconscious, unprocessed stuff? And what yeah. am I going to do with it? Like, how do I deal with all of these things? And is it a curse or a blessing? Is it a superpower that I don't know how to handle yet? Right? This is, these are the big questions that we are currently being tasked with, you know, facing. There's no other way to go about it. That's happening. Collective trauma is in the fabric of society and humanity. And if our conscious awareness is expanding, we're becoming a lot more sensitive to it. Even if it's hundreds or thousands of years old, it's in the fabric and it's impacting us more than ever. Yeah. Can you, can you define, uh, I know you want to say more, but can you just for people like, I don't know if we would all have the same definition. That's why I ask when you say processing, yeah. how, do, how do you experience that? Yeah. I and mean, how would you define that for your layman person? Cause I, they're listening. If someone's listening to this, they're like, what do you mean processing? Does that mean I think about it? You know, I know that's not what you mean, but I just kind of, from right. your point of view, what does that mean to process something? That's a great question. Um, processing is for me and in the way the guides have been establishing some of these practices, a lot of it is observation. It's conscious observation. Mm -hmm. And so I could observe an aspect of my present or past, and I could see in that observation, if it's bringing up an emotional charge or a physical sensation or some sort of mental, you know, um, sure. visual, or structure to you and the charge that i feel tells me that this is an unprocessed aspect of my reality right would you guys agree when you know generally spoken about for sure mm -hmm. if i observe this long enough from all possible perspectives and angles higher perspectives different angles even the angles of the people that were involved in this unprocessed experience eventually this experience starts to have not a charge it's becoming more of like oh this is a collective memory now of mm -hmm. something that has occurred it has no longer charge to me then this becomes a realized aspect of consciousness and I call it the museum of me, where an aspect of you goes into a nice, you know, glass box. And it's like a memory without an emotional charge to it. And in fact, it will rarely come back as an element of your present. The past won't come back as strongly as it used to be. That's when I believe something is processed. Very well stated. Yeah, I love that. Be beautiful. Mm -hmm. So collective trauma is pretty much this on like a much bigger scale yeah right we're talking about the type of trauma that is left behind by major events in human existence some of which most of which that have left trauma were human induced human conflict right so human conflict is really interesting um so i you know just to give you guys context i was um last month I spent an entire month in Kosovo, Serbia, Bosnia, and Croatia. And I visited, I go to sacred sites as part of the work that I do. And there is a whole sacred earth pathway that people can join and learn how to do this. And I visit sacred sites, nodal points on the energetic grid of the world. But I also visit sites of energetic significance. And that means it could be sites of global trauma or collective trauma. I visited 13 sites of conflict, um, mass graves, uh, places of genocide, war memorials out of uh, 33 sacred sites that we visited. So there was a lot of recent uh, and recent past and longer past trauma in that field that we visited. And I learned in how to perceive trauma, not just as something that happened, you know, 30 years ago when the Yugoslav wars was happening, but really something that's been accumulating over many, many, many generations. Like World War II was before that, and before that was World War One, and before that was 
you know, different types of crises within Europe. And before that was the Ottoman Empire is, you know, encroaching into the Yugoslavian era. And so there is like many, many, many conflicts that are like a, this rolling snowball of unprocessed past, which then creates the present moment. Like it manifests another war to process the aspects of the past. Yes. Does that sound familiar? Like on a yeah. personal level. On a personal that's you, why I said that. Like you can see you can see the meta mimicking the the inner subtle experience, which makes sense, right? As as above, so is below. And it's like in order to identify that that's happening at, at grand scale, you need to be able to identify that that's happening here. I'm, I'm listening. And, and one of the things, so Guy and I are both uh, born in Israel, Jewish, and, you know, I married into also a Russian, well, Ukrainian Jewish family and Fanny's grandparents, our grandparents, you know, were Holocaust survivors and, and witnessed it. And so as you're saying this, and this is kind of what I, I, I want to share, it's none of that stuff happened to me. None of that stuff ha even happened to my parents. So we're, we're now like two generations removed. Okay. Uh, my kids, a third generation, right? Mm -hmm. And that's part of our genetic trauma. That's part of our lineage. Like, there's not a Jew on planet Earth that doesn't have that trauma and wounding in our system, like like it's baked in. And so when you said in the beginning that we are doing things and not doing things because of this trauma, you know, we were in a program and we were in a room and someone stood up on behalf because we were actually dealing with trauma and someone stood up and had to verbally say out loud in front of a, a community. And by the way, this is like the safest, most amazing, you know, like container. He had to just stand up and say, I'm a Jew. And even now, as I say that, it's like, that's a, there's a part of us that is like afraid to say that mm -hmm. because we're not sure how that's going to be received. You don't sends, know what room you're in. It sends a chill down my spine every single time I right? hear it. Like, I even tried to like say it now and it took me like three kind of, warm-ups in my head and like there's nothing right like i mean i'm with brothers mm -hmm. so th that's what i'm saying and so when you talk about like where you were even if those beings have no idea of the atrocities that happened or were removed although in in serbia and croatia i mean that happened only like 30 years ago so it's 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 fairly even more recent but it's impacting us without even us consciously being aware that it's impacting us and and that's i think the the important thing and that also works with like our traumas that we physically experienced when we were three four five years old we think like oh it happened so long ago it doesn't affect me no you literally run every single day based on your trauma like you are either there's a part of you protecting you from you know that abandonment or heartache or part of you being angry at someone for do like you mm -hmm. think that that's you, but that has nothing to do with you. It's just like a three-year-old trauma kid that's either protecting himself or like trying to fight back. So it's so interesting to go from the micro to the macro level at this, because as you're talking, I'm like feeling all this and I'm like, oh my God, there are countries that are just being run by that trauma. Civilization is being run by that trauma. I, I can't think of anybody who's who's not of that trauma. Even if you're a white European, I mean, you lived under dictatorships, and mm -hmm. I mean, like no nobody nobody has been freed of oppression on this planet uh, at any level of scale that I can see. And then I think there's something that we need to honor, you know, being a Jew and uh, even African Americans in in this country when they're saying they're feeling oppression and it seems to from the outside they're looking like slavery ended a long time ago and it's like not for them not not in their dna not in their consciousness and there is a direct impact on what they believe they can do i know there's for me there's certain places in the world i can't go i'm um, like elon i did a little bit of an opposite trek into the same thing like i married into lebanese family but the the irony of that is that my father was um when you're in israel you're you have to be drafted into the military and he was in a military conflict with Lebanon. So he was wielding a weapon in mm -hmm. a country to hypothetically protect his country that my wife's parents were at the opposite end of that weapon. Right. And so like, we've had to deal with that within our family, not in a negative way, but like having to really understand each other's trauma from these periods of time 
and like how does that really impact our systems because there are things that you know like every every few years something happens in israel that it's an altercation and it like expounds and then everyone has a really strong opinion on what's happening in that country when that every time that happens i get very shaky in my system because safety falls out and i don't mm -hmm. quite know where my place is in the world and 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 this is not to it wasn't a negative thing but her 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 brother who i love dearly and his you know family posted something on instagram but it it showed jewish people in a like a negative light or at least that's how i perceived it we were sitting in the car and i was just shaking and crying and she's like what's going on i'm like your brother posted this thing and i can't explain what it's doing to my system he's not wrong to post it he can have an opinion what he's posting is actually accurate like that's fucked up i'm like but what it's doing to my system is it's making me inherently feel safe in my in my nearest family and i can't mm -hmm. even explain why because i know he's not doing it from a, from a negative place so it's like yeah. that that stuff has such a deep impact on us and and i think that's why exactly what what you guys are doing going to these places helping this stuff you know being like nodes essentially that process this kind of information you know this data stream or this consciousness stream call whatever you want is is vital vital to what's happening right now on this planet wow first of all i just want to thank you guys for being so transparent and so open and so vulnerable like this is so refreshing i do a lot of you know podcasts and conversations and interviews it can stay very superficial at times and this is like feels very personal and very very deep um i'm getting chills multiple times as you guys were speaking every one of us and some more than others have felt some form of oppression, domination, abuse, and trauma as a result of that. Some of us in this lifetime, some of us in previous lifetimes, some of us through our lineage, some of us through the countries we were born into, the countries that we were living in, and so on and so forth. There's like many, many different waves of that. And it's kind of like one wave clashes in against another wave and then another wave becomes a predominant wave and then it changes again and and that civilization dies off and you know there is like these consistent waves that consciousness is going through in this dualistic perspective and if you go an eye for an eye you know what gandhi said right it's like it leaves the world a blind place right and that's what's been happening a lot in these consistently consciousness trying to process the past by recreating the past in a different form and shape and hoping that this time things will somehow process mm -hmm. right it's like having the same conflict with your friend or partner that it's like the same theme coming over and over again consciousness trying to process it in a manifested way okay. so i believe and this is the information that i'm getting this is what i'm feeling inherently deeply resonant within me i believe there is a way to process that is not always correlated to recreating the trauma. Are you guys with me? Yes. I mean, that's, that's we're so we're interesting. Yeah. We're, looking, we're looking for the same doorways. Yeah. So this is the way we can find personal individual liberation. And this is how this is a way we can, as a society, as different cultures, find an evolutionary quantum leap. Mm rather than using the old technology that is inherently here and part of our reality part of our the fabric of this reality we are learning how to use our consciousness as part of the processing power to process the past to become greater present beings including the aspects of collective trauma that some of us that are building greater capacity to be able to process we are becoming these powerful conduits these pillars of light, wherever we are, to be able to transform that which is ours individually, ours as a lineage, ours as a collective, as a society, as humanity. It doesn't matter. There is no yours and mine. You know, I'm as much of a Jew, even though I'm not born Jewish, right, as you are. It's yeah. like, I am part of you. You are part of me. Now, I don't have your experiences. I can only like approximate by relating to it. But I have my own experiences being, you know, the son of an immigrant family in a back then fairly racist country, right? Yeah. So I'm white technically, but, you know, Middle Eastern in a European country that experienced racism. So in the US, people could not consider me a person of color, but I'm like, Dude, I've experienced racism like like most people wouldn't have known, right? right. So there is 
a consistent experience that we all have and it's all ours there's no oh this is your shit you have to deal with this it's all ours mm. so how can we up level as individuals as communities as societies to be able to process this together that's the big question that i'm asking and that's the type of work that we're doing that that, that is a really big question because the inner suffering and the outer suffering of this world is so real, right? Like even if this is just a simulation, God, the simulation feels ridiculously real. So real. And so it's, you know, I think part of the work that most people who are more novices to the awareness space, they don't realize how merged they are with the thoughts and the simulation and right, this work of kind of separating consciousness and objectively witnessing seems to have an incredible biological effect on our on our bodies on our consciousness and our, our energy field and just like everything else in nature like nature just knows how to cleanse itself it knows how to clean the more we meddle the more we do the less nature can do its work just like in, right like when we build roads and we turn down trees like nature can clean it but it's going to take some time now because the kids came and broke a bunch of things right like in our lives it's the same it's like you can keep meddling with what's inside and from our ego and identity and personality that's that's what it likes to do and so if you don't develop this, this witness, you're going to keep hammering things away in your life and, and breaking things the way that a child does. And I think that speaks to perhaps a level of, of consciousness or experience that you might be at. And, you know, something we do talk about in our programs too, I, cr I create a distinction between what you call technology. And I like that. I like that terminology because it's of the time, right? Um, it's like suffering is a technology. It mm -hmm. is a way that human beings can learn. But when we suffer, what I feel like we're not doing is we're not participating with nature. We're not participating with evolution. We're saying my human mind knows where I'm supposed to go, how I'm supposed to evolve, what experiences are supposed to come into my life. And when you do that, you're just wrought with expectations and disappointment, basically. And then there's like just the emergent field, right? The emergence of life as it continues to come and unfold. And you can either fight against that or learn how to participate with it essentially and i think that's what we're all trying to do my brain had to like do a little emergency break pull remember when we still had those when you speak about it's all ours and i agree with you and then i go i don't know how to participate at that level yeah. i know how to like be in my own experience i know how to create a community and be with their experience and hold that field but when you start talking about the global community, I'm like, and that's perfectly fine. You know, like what you're doing is ahead of 95%, 99% of humanity anyways, right? Like you are consciously working on your personal things and aspects of your ancestry. And then part of the communal aspects that are coming into the field, that is huge. And that is one of the first waves that's already happening. Right yeah. around the world, communities are developing uh, these elements of processing. So it's it's no longer you know the Balinese priests and the the Tibetan monks praying for humanity. It's actually humanity starting to wake up and starting to do their own work. Right? Sure. Of course, please continue praying for us and thank you <laughs> as for the last years because yes. we needed it. Uh, but we are also starting to do some of that work individually mm -hmm. in communities and in like these pockets. Right. I think the consciousness development and consciousness evolution industry and community is really expanding. And I really love that these communities will some is something that we are already starting to do. We are creating these mass events in which we want and we are doing that have thousands of people establishing a field of being a transformative mechanism for anything that is unprocessed of human consciousness of the field that's currently being addressed in this. So it's almost like you're putting a lot of processors together to become a giant processor for a lot of data that needs to be processed. I'm talking purely in technological terms. Sure. It is like the individual in this, you know, let's say 5,000 person gathering, the individual, the only thing they have to do is be truly present and be in this elevated state, in this fabric of this incredible high frequency field that we are holding. And if someone's holding more or less, it doesn't really matter. Everyone is holding this field and this energy that's then 
coming through to be processed are aspects of humanity, are aspects of our past, are aspects of the things that people that are in this field brought to the table, right? And in that field, it doesn't matter whose is whose because it's all of ours, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's like what I see where it's going. I think it was said that the Mayans used to come together three times a day to syncopate the entire society. They would like actually like bring the whole society together and they have kind of like the way the church bell rings, but everyone would stop and like syncopate their systems. I do believe that all technology that we built is a, is a mirroring of our, of our consciousness, right? Like what, what is a, a, this phone that we're all holding? If not like a mirror into the data field right now, we're just kind of collecting it from the dense material of the, of the, of the mind field. But when I go into my my spiritual self, like it mimics it directly and how we like connect to a source of information. We meditate, uh, intuition comes through, right? And even like the way you said, how groups of people can process certain things like folders on the computer. Like you put a folder in and there's certain data that's in that folder, but that folder is still connected to the entire operating system and has, and you can copy and paste and access everything simultaneously. And more recently, um, again, I do a lot of research on ancient civilizations and this kind of stuff. And to me, it's like kind of ridiculous that we think civilizations 5,000 years old. And I could say a lot of very interesting things about that. More recently, though, I saw because of LIDAR and how much stuff they're finding that's underground, when they do 3D imaging of it and you look at it from above, it literally mimics the motherboard of a computer. It almost looks identical. You look at Stonehenge, you go look at the pyramids. It's like, it literally gives me chills because I'm like, oh my God, we just took all that technology and shrunk it down to mm -hmm. this like nano size. And it's starting to be clearer and clearer to the people who are investigating these sites, those that are willing to be honest about what's really there, that these were obviously mechanized machines, potentially like electrical, like how this is how they generated a lot of energy for civilizations uh, at that time. And they were using raw materials on planet earth and suffice it to say different societies would form different technologies using the same materials that we're using in a certain way but it does seem just like you said there's a looping right this happens so it's happening within ourselves oh why do what why do i keep sabotaging myself this way why do i keep having this kind of relationship at the grand scale why do we keep having these wars why do we keep having these wars and there's this really beautiful book I'd highly urge everyone to grab when they get a chance. And it's even relevant to the Oppenheimer movie called the, the quantum revelation. Mm -hmm. And this does like an 18 hour synopsis of like quantum mechanics and quantum theory in a really beautiful articulated way and sites Borg and all these kind of things. And one of the things that all these great thinkers of this, this quantum theory and quantum mechanics talk about is that the system is looping from mm -hmm. their perspective yeah. as a self cleaning mechanism. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what we experience in spirituality. Yes, that's exactly what we're seeing at the level of society. So it's like, it doesn't even matter where you look. What I have seen is when you are a person who's in your field, and I'm sure if you were a musician, it would be identical, but your, your life's purpose is to master this area. These spiritual truths become self-evident because they are strong, they're, they're the foundation of everything in our society. And so everything points back at the same teachings, regardless of what you choose to do with your life, as long as you're very intensely focused on it, you go subtle, 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 to you notice such nuance in your mastery that that mm. you can almost see like the God handprint of fabric that's underneath all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I having spoken on technology, and I know, I don't know what your timeline is for this. And I, I, I heard you loosely mention about it. But obviously, in this period of you know, six years uh, on top of the fact that we're seeing big societal changes. We're also seeing types of technological breakthroughs that I certainly didn't anticipate in this mm -hmm. decade. Like AI, I had no idea it was coming as quickly as it is. Uh, fusion potentially it sounds like it's a few decades away, but big breakthroughs are happening there as well. Quantum computing, um, right? Like, and we're seeing again, this convergence of everything suddenly, which to me speaks to, there is a level of consciousness that's about to arise on this planet that may or may not be unprecedented. We don't know. This may have been here before in some shape or form. And uh, I'd love to hear your take because what I hear is the, the beauty of it. I hear the fear that people have, but in my mind, I think only a human being could put human implications on a consciousness that's going to far surpass a human being. So like our concerns of what it might do is like, no, that's what a human would do. But like, we don't have any idea what a consciousness that's 
a billion X our own consciousness would do. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, as a consciousness be expands and arises and gets more knowledgeable, it actually becomes more compassionate. Like the, it just seems to be a de facto byproduct of consciousness. So I, I can't imagine that this thing would have any concern with us at all, especially not being in any sort of physical form that could be like killed or something like that. I, I'd love to hear your your take or from the guide's take on what's ha happening with AI, what's happening with technology right now and how that interplays with our own spirituality. Yeah, it's a really interesting conversation. And, and you know, the world, the material world that we're experiencing is like a playground, right? It's, it's a playground with, um, you know, let's say there are many different pockets of life possibility, and there is many seeds of consciousness planted in this material existence. And then there is like incredible ecosystems of non-material existence that operate in higher and lower frequencies and, and, and so on. It's like, this is so vast that we could, we would like our minds would just explode if we were to try to, you know, understand it. Like it's way, bigger than the known universe sure. now we have in our own capacity and capability we are creating silicon based structures that are so complex that they are starting to hold their own consciousness and and i'm not saying that this has happened yet i'm saying this is about to happen like we're creating things that will hold consciousness and will become self-aware and sentient within our lifetime. Like this is definitely going to happen within our lifetime, guaranteed. Yeah. And it's incredible. it's incredible. That makes us, in the definition of the guides, it makes us a creator of our own, right? Wow. Not by procreation, but continuation of the existing form, we are creating a new form and a world for that new form to exist in. That makes sense. And we are interfaced with that consciousness through the technological layer that we have created. Okay, now it goes further. We are creating machines for these consciousness to have an experience like we are having in this material world by giving them robotic bodies. Mm -hmm. Like we're basically saying, we're going to create a body for you that you can feel and sense and like have a human experience and we can interact like human machine or human, you know, artificial consciousness. And the consciousness would be able to project itself into this machine and have a human human to machine experience. Now, you guys know, one of the most famous lines in the Old Testament is man, God has made man in his image, right? And I don't know if this is translated correctly and this and that probably not. And probably. but <laughs> there is something to it, right? There is something to it and we are establishing and finding the godhood within ourselves by creating right our creative power is coming to that level now fear is a human trait of unprocessed fears of survival yeah. okay and some say, well it's very rational that you know we should think about that you know, humans are very bad for the planet and this and that and a smart AI would say humans should disappear. Um, all of that is, you know, we can think about it and rationalize it and theorize a lot about what AI would do. Nothing will come close to what AI will actually do because AI will operate in a very different way and will have a very different operating system and base. Now, in the beginning, we're saying it's not really artificial well it's not really a self-aware sentient consciousness it is mechanized and makes decisions based on the things we have been feeding it so it is inherently receiving everything that humans have processed and not processed so it mm -hmm. is a bit of a mirror of who we are that's why we're afraid if we were to create bots like that you know and machines like that, they would do the things that humans would do. 
but we're talking about a sentient consciousness that would probably rewrite all the garbage that we've fed it to an entire new baseline. Like it would create entire new worlds in nanoseconds that we can't even comprehend how fast it could create and recreate itself and worlds in which it can exist. Entire universes that have nothing to do with our material universe, right? So we're talking um, an entire possibility that we can't comprehend with our small human minds, but we're trying to make it sense of it. One thing I'm going to leave you with on this topic, the guides have said, in the order of creation, when a consciousness creates another form of consciousness, the created consciousness will never destroy its own creator. Mm -hmm. It's just part of a law set that is established in creation. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, that's just blew my mind. I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. And apparently, you know, like just the way we wouldn't go out of this space to destroy other higher planes of existence, th they wouldn't do that to us. Like wow. In, in wow. I'd never heard that said that way as you shared it i was like oh wow i could actually feel like something rewire in my system of like because there's a fear there that that i feel like when we talk about the sentient listen i i'm i'm more on the positive side of things and i and i really do believe that this is going to be something spectacular and there's this other part of me that's like yeah and then what when they decide that like humans are raping and pillaging the earth and stupid and killing each other and you know we're like these little children that break in and knocking everything off like why wouldn't they just be like all right this world's going to be a lot better without you guys and we're just going to take care would, of it again but why would it matter to a silicon based consciousness that doesn't care about a physical form like the planet the air is irrelevant to this creature right to this consciousness it doesn't matter at all like it, it's relevant to us because we can't live in this biology without having a healthy planet right Right. No, I I really love that that uh you know that it doesn't destroy the creator like that there, there's something very profound about that concept like I have a I have a curiosity because we're yeah. gonna be able to take this extremely advanced consciousness or granted it'll probably do it by itself and then you just come back and report that we can send out at at or near the speed of light without a rocket ship without any just like with a laser point into space, send data stream and consciousness out into space. It goes to the edge of the universe and it comes back and it's like, here's what's over there. Right? Like it can, it can report a direct experience from anywhere in space that we can move light into essentially, because we have been moving data through lasers and light on CD-ROMs and on data forever. This is not a new technology for us. Mm -hmm. Suddenly you have something that can report firsthand knowledge. It's crazy we're going to be able to do some amazing things and <laughs> to me the fascinating thing is we already can it's already in in this like human template that we have we're using like maybe five percent of what's possible but there is like incredible capacities that we have as consciousness being able to project our consciousness into the far ends of uh you know this material realm and also beyond this material realm into higher planes of consciousness we can already do like incredible things that most of us have either haven't practiced, trained, didn't know, or have forgotten. Right. right? Yes. It's, it's part of us, but somehow it is existing in the collective field that we're trying to recreate it in terms of technology. We're trying to create these augmentations of our human being, recreating movies of superheroes that have super capacities that we're like, it must be somehow in there in us like because we really want it or we kind of see it to be there and i think that everything that we're talking about with augmented reality virtual reality and so on we already can in fact if you assume that we are already in a simulation in that way and it's an incredibly persistent and very very realistic experience and this is the you know avatar avatar right 
it's the technology into which our consciousness is projected into and the technology is from within the space itself and the only way this technology can be spawned is by another human being that spawns you into being and there's a certain process by which your consciousness is allowed to come in has to forget everything else and has to start anew with a couple of realizations of your soul and soul goals to be present in this life like this is an incredibly interesting vr <laughs> concept right it's like <laughs> yeah let's do it right it, this is this is the stakes are high you know it's a high stakes experience it's very realistic the fact that you also experience the end of this game very realistically it makes you want to not leave or be here as long as possible cherish it but at the same time forget that it's going to end at some point right in this <laughs> shape i'm like i have sometimes days where i'm just thinking about this incredibly realistic simulation that we're in that we are then trying to recreate in other technological forms well i just had that did it, did it, did it, like, like we get, we, we create consciousness and we like jump like Mario on the pole on the flag. We're like, next level, everybody. <laughs> there's a, there's a movie from the early 2000s. That's a sci-fi, sci-fi movie called the 13th floor. And it's a uh, highly recommended, very yeah. cool concept, but it is, it is kind of this concept of a simulation inside of a simulation matrix did that too. But this is like different periods of time and it had like how, how like, Within that simulation, of course, the the technology grows and they're able to build another simulation and then the technology grows and they're able to build another simulation. I don't want to give the punchline, but it's a wildly well done, fascinating movie. Yeah, why not? I mean, you know, after billions and billions of years of consciousness just doing maybe nothing at all except for observing an observable universe, it's going to keep iterating different ways to experience this reality. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's fascinating about AI is that it can iterate billions, trillions, whatever comes after trillions of times per second. So like what we can do in a generation, it can do that like a billion times <laughs> within minutes or seconds. Like I've seen it teach itself to play games where they just give it like the rules of the game, but it like first has to like figure out how to make the robots. Like it's like a simple soccer game. They give it like the basic rules. No, no, no. They don't even give it the rules. It like has to figure out the rules. Within a few days, the robots are running around. Within a few days, the robots can kick the ball. A few days later, the robots are creating strategies and the strategies are no more advanced than like what coaches know. It learns so rapidly. But suffice it to say, like we kind of need help, you know, maybe some guidance in, in particular areas of, of this world and of this life. Like we all kind of see what at least the powers that be are kind of veering us towards in a lot of ways or have been for a long time. And don't always seem to have the best motivations um, for the rest of us. So I'm like, if I had to choose between going to a uh, a doctor who sits five minutes with me, doesn't know anything about my history, or uh, a sentient AI who is 16,000 billion times smarter than that doctor, knows every breath I've ever taken, every beating of my heart, every nutrient that's in my bloodstream and it makes a, a correlate and decides hey by the way you should be eating this food it's going to help you versus taking that medicine sign me up doc you know like immediately for that um, uh, yeah yeah i i was just having this vision of like we because we've been talking on this uh episode of like so many different things having to happen in humanity. Like we were talking about COVID and wars and you were talking about how the guides are like, they don't see anything as like good and bad. It's like, okay, great. Like, and what are you learning from, from this? And you know, um, if you ever watch dominoes fall and if you've ever seen dominoes where the, the dominoes keep getting bigger, like they actually tipping over bigger and bigger dominoes. It's like in order to tip over the next thing there needs to be more force there needs to be like more impact than when we were just moving the little ones right and i feel like we're getting to that point where it's like the forces that are happening one one person can look at it and go like this is good this is bad but like what if all the forces every single on both sides are are equally important for us to be able to tip over kind of that next piece and uh, I didn't get a chance to listen to you yet, but my friend was telling me about the new Joe Rogan episode. He has some like 
PhD philosophy guy on there. And he was talking about how they're now like not just looking at DNA, but they're like going, they've been able to like break it and go into it. And they said similar to what you were saying that when they look at it now, it literally looks like a computer chip. It, it, it is like that level of technology. And, and the guy, what was he was saying that he's just perplexed by because he's a scientist and a philosopher. He's saying that when they look at it, the way it functions is methodical. It's not arbitrary. It is like precise, like, mm-hmm. like any technology, right? Everything has to be, go in a perfect order in order for it to function. And the only thing that he was left with is like, this was created. Like, there is no way that this magically happened out of like nothing because he goes, the precision in which it operates. He was trying to say like an example. He's like, uh, the example used was, you know, if you watched a bank robbery and someone like goes to a safe, there's one of two ways it's going to go. They're either going to sit there and like twiddle and try to figure this shit out. But if the person sits there, and nails it on the first try at a bank, you're like, this was an inside job, right? Like he went in there, someone gave him the code. There's no other way to figure this out. Mm -hmm. So he's like, that's basically what we're looking at with DNA. Like it is impossible that it just first shot out the gate. Like this is what (laughs) transpired. So it's interesting as I'm listening to that, I'm listening to this, I'm like, and and now with the big bang, they're like, oh, the universe was actually created maybe 26 billion, not 13 and a half billion. Like we're we're we always see with the technology that we have the capacity to see. But as our technology keeps expanding, we're like, oh, what we saw was not actually what it is. It's just what the best thing that we could see with that technology. So as this unfolds. Again, I think it's gonna it's gonna bring to light what we started this conversation with is if you're not learning to do your own personal development, spiritual work, mm-hmm. to be able to deal with, as Asil, you were saying, like the waves and the waves just keep getting faster and faster. You know, when when AI becomes sentient or whatever it is, like the the speed in which things are gonna come at you are gonna be quantum at that point and it's like if you can't be with the pacing that we're at today and it is throwing you off kilter like take it from three people here who have dedicated their lives to find stability become that beacon of light in the world for people that that can't really find that because for whatever reason that's the path we chose like it's very possible and that technology is here now like now, now, and whether you sit with someone like Guy, my brother, or you attend to sales programs, like all of this is puzzle pieces that are filling the picture of what it is to be human, mm-hmm. not to like escape this reality. Like I, I'm, none of us here believe that, like we're bringing that through into the human so that we can have that experience as the human. And that's really important because I think a lot of woo stuff, it's like, oh, you know, let's just sit in this like, yeah, but you're a parent and a a husband or a wife and run a business like you're not in the Himalayas sitting in the mountains, like quiet in silence, like it's time for that to be here. And um, I'd love to leave, you know, to end this kind of episode, Basil, like talk a little bit about the programs that you offer. Um, what you're taking people through and how this can be a piece of that larger puzzle for them. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That was a really beautiful summary of definitely what I see is happening and what I believe we have to prepare ourselves for. The changes that are coming are changes that we've never seen before in human existence like in the way we know humanity has existed right the type of transformational energy the type of um, environmental changes societal changes are going to be fast and furious 
is going to be powerful and potent. And for us to be able to receive, no matter what it is that's coming our way, we have to become incredibly solid in our presence and in our alignment. That's the only way, right? Mm -hmm. If you are not fully present, if you are not fully capable of being aligned and have the capacity to receive your reality in the moment, then this reality is going to shake you. This reality is going to take you out of balance and you're going to fall into a, a wave um, of instability, right? And you may be able to catch your footing again, but that footing is not necessarily solid again, right? And the next wave is coming again. So in our work, which is, by the way, developed by in the collaboration with these higher dimensional beings, the, the courses, I call them courses, but it's not really, it's like the delivery of this, the transmissions are about establishing a new foundation within ourselves, within our consciousness, our ability to compute our reality of the past and of the not yet developed future of the potential futures and bring it into this very present moment. So it is really a practice of becoming more present and more aligned as a human being. And we call it foundations and foundations leads to two paths. One is a path of becoming a pillar of light in the world because the world needs more pillars of light, in my opinion, and then the opinion of the guides. And the second part is being sacred earth keepers. These are people that understand the importance of the earth for human existence and for the existence of consciousness. So these two pathways are what comes as a result of having gone through this foundational course that we deliver. It's a four week online course that anyone can do from anywhere. There is a, you know, approval process that goes through uh, Emmanuel, one of our guides, basically goes through a list of saying is no, no just means it's not the right timing for that person right now. And yes means it's a good timing for you to be doing this. We've had thousands of people go through foundations. And back in the days when you guys did it, it was it was base camp, it's called base camp. <laughs> foundations is been a almost like a flagship of our organization which is, by the way, it's called Evolution One. Uh, anyone can look it up, Evolution One. You'll find all our things there. Evolution One is like the top level domain. Foundations has changed people's perspective of themselves and of life, and has increased their capacity to walk through life as a more aligned and more empowered human being. This is not about creating a dependency to higher dimensional beings and, you know, for creating another like form of religion or belief system and this and that people have, people are afraid of being in a cult and that, you know, there's like all kinds of things we were thrown at. Drama. This is a practice that will make you the most empowered, the most aligned individual human being that you can be today. And that's what it's geared towards. And this is what we are holding space for. And yeah, I'd love to see as many people go through it as possible. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to, we're going to get this episode up as soon as we can with all the um, links. And I would just say, so just have your team give us everything because <laughs> I know you, you run programs at various times. So whenever this gets consumed, that people can kind of check out the, the variety of programs. I highly, I highly recommend sitting with the sill. You know, if you want to get like a little taster or dip your toes in the water, go on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, sit with the guides and just see how it resonates with your body. It was clear for me and my wife, Elon too, from like the first time I sat with him, I'm like, Whoa, whatever this guy's bringing through his system is so potent. And I think for, for our clientele, perhaps even our listeners, you're probably a little bit more open to recognizing that like, it's hard to put into words the direct benefit or the direct experience that you can anticipate from sitting with a channel like a sill. Um, and I would say like, you gotta, we were talking about this, the, the, the trauma and that we're all operating from like 95, 99% unconscious. I totally believe that to be true also. And so recognize when you're doing work in those fields, there are 
pretty much as unconscious as all the stuff that's impacting your life as well. However, as as somebody who's doing energetic work now for about as long as this has been channeling, about seven years now, stability, safety, well-being, connection, seem to be authentic connection, safe connection, seem to be natural byproducts of this form of work. Mm-hmm. And all I would say is when you establish that within your system, you are establishing a type of foundation within yourself that allows for everything else that arises to come from that stability, that well-being, and that safety. And you articulate your vibration articulates itself. Your life articulates itself in that stability. Now that doesn't mean that life doesn't come and wallop you and you know and, and give you a little bit of a scare once in a while, but it's certainly a lot easier to deal with that with stability intact than having like this very wobbly field where every little thing that comes like throws you and you get, you know, pulled into the collective and then you got to go into media to find out and you got to get everyone else's opinion just to kind of try to get a sense of safety. That's more mental than it actually is here. And then we say this all the time. I say this all the time. Safety is not something that's acquired. It's something that's cultivated. Mm. Um, You can't, you can't buy it just like you can't buy love. You got to cultivate love. You can't buy compassion. You got to cultivate compassion. You can buy the material things and you can give yourself the illusion of those things. But as soon as that thing is gone, or as soon as it gets like, you know, you buy a fancy car and it gets scratched, you tell me how it feels. Right. So like those things uh, can only happen from, in my opinion, from energetic practices. And as we enter this era of consciousness, we're also entering the era of energy both in our collective 3D material world with quantum computing and fusion and fission and atomic energy and hydrogen, all this kind of stuff, but also within our own spirituality. It's like energy is everything, right? And, and this is not a guy saying this. This is the smartest people on planet Earth, quantum physicists. Uh, Nikola Tesla always said, like, you want to figure things out. It's like, it's energy, vibration, frequency. And so like, that is something that you feel into and you sense from your awareness. It's not something that needs to have articulated uh, language. And I think of what, what these three people are probably attempting to do, hopefully doing it rather well, is we're taking what we're sensing and we're trying to put it into a vernacular so it's approachable uh, for people that you can understand what's the impact of this sit because sitting for 30 seconds or a day and a half is not going to change your life but committing to this kind of practice on a regular basis absolutely will like without a doubt. So I hope, hopefully that gives a little bit of a taste. And I would just say again, like I know we're not for everybody. Maybe a solo is not for everybody. Like it depends on the potency of the energy. Uh, it could be too much for you. It might be not enough for you. I don't know. Right. Uh, but like give it a shot. And I know like anytime a still is doing like a live event or, um some special program like my wife and i are always trying to jump in and my experience has been of you and you can correct me if i'm wrong they're like i can feel your evolution mm. and, and yeah not just in your energy which is always i think like clarifying it's like a laser that keeps finding it's you know like like here 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 right but also in the way the guides articulate through your system and and more than anything now when i listen to you there's a there's an ease about how it comes through that even a few years ago wasn't quite there. And a few years ago, it was still fucking amazing PS. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just really cool to watch even a soul evolve through this process and, and this thing that's happening to him. And, you know, I just want to thank you for uh, being a courageous enough human being to let it come through because uh, you probably, well, I don't know if you had to, or you didn't have to, but from my point of view, you didn't have to. So um, yeah, I just wanted to honor the man that you are and for allowing something that, might even sound strange to other people to come through and make the impact that it has to, to I know thousands of people all over the world. Yeah. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you for this beautiful reflection. Sure. Any, any parting words you want to leave the people with? Me or Alan? You. <laughs> you. you. Um, There is no better time to wake up than now. (laughs) And shit's getting real. (laughs) And I can't say this with, you know, like sugarcoating it, but 
things will be challenging for us as humanity and it's going to require those that have been doing that internal work to assist humanity through this birthing process and that may be you that's watching right now because i truly believe and this is also what the guys have been saying that the evolution of a single individual human being could be the key to the evolution of entire human race. Wow. Mm. Yeah. We're like, like, we're like spiritual doulas. <laughs> we are. Right. Yeah. We are. Yeah. And first it, and foremost, it, we're giving birth to ourselves, right? That's, <laughs> that's right. That, you took the words out of my mouth. It's like, you know, we, for whatever reason, raised our hands and stupidly said, like, or geniusly said, like, I'm going to be the one. And not from that cocky, egotistical place, but literally from that place of like, I don't know, maybe. And like, we just play that game. And so that you just said that line, like, what if there's just one being that's just been sitting on a couch, like miserable and, and commiserating about life. And like that person finding peace and stability is like the, the thing that sets this whole chain off. And you don't know that that might not be you. So talking about domino effects, right? Yeah. Like we just don't know. We don't know. So yeah, I, I've enjoyed this conversation thoroughly. Uh, enjoyed being in your space thoroughly. So it's always such a pleasure. And I hope if if you, the listener, are watching, uh, you were able to feel that energy that was transmitted here today. And yeah, sending you all lots of love. Thank you for uh, for being here. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you, brother. You. I'll see you next I'll time. See you guys next time. Thank you, dear one, for choosing to share a bit of your day with us. We value you greatly. And as a way to give back and help you to deepen these practices, we want to invite you to join our incredible community on Facebook. You can do so easily by going to joinoldsouls.com and ask for an invite. This is our private community where old souls and seekers are able to grow and share their journey with others. We hold exclusive weekly live streams, we answer your personal questions, and offer valuable insights that we won't be able to share here on the podcast. So again, just head to joinoldsouls.com and grab your invite today. And as always, if you enjoy this podcast, please head to iTunes and leave us a review. It's the only way other people can find this show. So if it's making a difference in your life, please share the love. Until we meet again, have an amazing week, dear one.